All right, folks, uh, we are joined by uh, Jeff Weiner here on the Steve Malsberg Show, Orlando Sentinel Court reporter. Um, hello, Jeff. How are you? I'm good, good. Thanks for having me back. It is always my pleasure. The defense rested today. Um, it was kind of a bizarre day. Talk a little bit. We only have about four minutes, but talk a little bit about the confrontation between the judge and uh, the defense. Uh, she addressed George Zimmerman uh, once in the afternoon, asked him if he was going to testify. Uh, the defense attorney, Don West, objected. Uh, she pursued. He said he didn't know. She said she would ask him again when they came back. Uh, she, before they left, then she actually asked him, do you have any other witnesses you want the defense to call on your behalf, which mm. was really bizarre. And then when he came back, of course, she asked him, and he said, well, I'm not going to testify. So uh, talk a little bit about that. that, that, that uh, uh, do you have any other witnesses you want your lawyers to call? What was that about? Well, the tension has been building kind of between Judge Nelson and Donald West uh, for, for a couple of days now. Last night, uh, as court dragged on to, I think it was 10 p.m. when it finally recessed, um, they got into a bit of a spat about the introduction of evidence, also about starting court early the next day. She kind of stormed off while he was still talking to her. Then there was this moment today where she's, she was trying to ask George Zimmerman if he had made his decision about whether or not he was going to testify. Um, it's kind of unusual for a judge to do it when she did it. Um, it there were still defense, defense witnesses yet to call, to call. Right, right. and uh, Don West uh, re objected to it repeatedly. Um, it, in my experience, judges handle this differently. It's not uncommon for a judge to uh, – judges often feel, feel the need to confirm with a defendant that the decisions their attorneys are making are also their decisions and that they agree on them. Uh, she's done that without any controversy a few times in the trial about various things that the, the attorneys have agreed to. The, the, the odd thing was the timing and this kind of back and forth where West objects, she says overruled, he objects again, she says right, overruled yeah. more strongly and basically tells him, listen, I'm talking to your client and that's that's what's happening. How, whether how you about like it or how not. Com I, mean, I mean, I know they do ask, uh, as she did uh, later, you know, do you want to testify and all that, which isn't right. that uncommon. You're saying the timing was, which I agree, but I, I don't think I've ever seen it done where the judge says, you know, do you have any other witnesses you want your 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 attorneys to uh, uh, to call? That that was bizarre. I've seen that. I've seen that done before. Yeah. I don't always see it done. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that it's a, a, an issue of uh, judicial discretion. But yeah, I'm pretty I guess. Sure that I've seen it happen before. But yeah, she. I mean, she's indicated a few times throughout the trial. You know, I mean, obviously with a trial of this profile, especially, you're worried about appellate issues and and things that could be claimed. You know, if there was a conviction as to you know. It, it, you know, a potential claim of ineffective assistance of counsel or something along those lines. I think that's what she's looking out for, but she's definitely been aggressive, and, and uh, Don West has definitely pushed back, and there's been, there's been this real tension in, in the courtroom between right. them. Summarize in a minute the witnesses we saw today, ending with the father. Before that, the, uh, the neighbor who had a house broken into while she was home with her child um, in the complex, and uh, also the, the use of the dummy to demonstrate uh, the attack. I, I, you got about a minute and a half. Go. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, the first witness was Dennis Root. He's a uh, former law enforcement uh, veteran and trainer for law enforcement agencies. Basically, he said he testified in his many words, though he wasn't allowed to just come out and say it, that he believes George Zimmerman's use of force was reasonable, that he thinks that, uh, that, it, it, that his account matches the facts of the case, and that he thinks that George Zimmerman didn't have any other option but to fire. Um, during that testimony, we had that strange, this, both, both lawyers mounting this, um, you know, their word, uh, mounting this, uh, this dummy to kind of demonstrate their theories variously of, of, of what could have happened between Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. Um, the thing that stood out from that was that O'Mara kind of was able to underscore that there were a differing of opinions, but that supports reasonable doubt, which is something that plays right. in favor of the defense. Right. Well, we're going uh, to finish. We're, we're going to run out of time here, so I just wanted to say they did finish with the father. They did rest yep. their case. So next tomorrow, what do we have? Uh, well, assuming there are any issues with the last uh, the state's uh, rebuttal witness, a closing argument start at one. Wow. All right. Well, look, hopefully we'll be able to talk to you tomorrow, Jeff. Thank you.